to 40 fabulous years. Yay! Is that cool? Woo, is this going to be fun, huh? Oh my gosh, I'm getting too crazy already. So, 40 fabulous years. How does that happen? How does you, life go so fast, huh? Yeah. I got the cutest dolls, and they look just like me. What do you think? Yeah? yeah. So, Joanne Massey made these for me, and it's definitely then and now. Don't you think? Okay, so this one says 1978 quilt in a day. Here I am, the good old school teacher. Oh, got my book, Log Cabin Quilt in a Day. And did you know that these bolts actually have my own fabric wrapped on wow. them? And I think this is just like I dressed in 78. Always oh, wore jumpers, you know, jumpers kind of baggy here and little shirts with stuff on them. That's just so cute. Love my brown hair. Yeah, it was brown at one time. And then we go to 2018. This is definitely me. Starbucks in my hand. I should be doing, I should get paid for an advertisement, huh? But anyhow, I love a little frosting in my hair. Red lips, definitely red lips. And I love the outfit and the jacket and the little shoes, the Mary Jane shoes. And look. Joanne took our 40th anniversary bag and put egg money in it and more fabric and tools. It's just perfect. Awesome. Isn't it cute? Yay. And the quilt. It's, and, the, and today, of course, the quilt is... Log Cabin. Yay! Cool, cool. Well, I have a little bit of story to tell you with photographs. Are you ready? Ready. So I already told you that I was a teacher. Yes. yes. My husband and I were both teachers in Pennsylvania, and I taught special education. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I taught special education. And while I was teaching it, I also wrote curriculum. So Eric has a picture to show of one of my teaching pictures. That is me. Yes, it is. Look, you like the hairdo, huh? And, of course, I am wearing my double-knit polyester dress. I was so good with polyester. Okay, I love the kids, but I love to go to the fabric store Friday night, buy a couple yards of double-knit polyester. I'd run home, cut it Saturday, sew it up Saturday, Sunday, and wear it on Monday. I thought I was, I thought I was pretty big stuff. <laughs> but anyhow, that was such a good time in my life. So now we're going to fast forward to 1976, okay? So here I am in California already, and I already have two sons. Grant is on the left. And Orion, the cute little baby on the right. Now, when you're with Santa, you always have smiles, right? So there's Grant. He's got his candy cane, and he's so happy sitting there with his candy cane. And take a look at Orion. Yep. He looks scared to death, doesn't he? He looks always crying. That little guy was always crying. But... It paid off. He said, you know, Mom, if I wouldn't have been such a crybaby, we would have never had quilt in a day. And it's true. It's absolutely true because he made me go flying into my sewing room and go, pedal to the metal, because I knew in the next minute he would be crying. <laughs> so anyhow, it was just a lot of fun. So, 78, I went to Parks and Rec. And I said, Can't, uh, can I um, teach double-knit polyester dresses? I really know how to do that. <laughs> and they said, L? No, you told me the wrong year. Oh, no, we have to do it in 76 75. because 76 is bicentennial. Bicentennial. Yeah. bicentennial. David said, should I give you cue cards, L? Yes, maybe you should. It's the bicentennial. So I go to Parks and Rec, and I say, can I teach double knit polyester dresses? And they said, no, 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 L. 
it's the bicentennial. Everybody in the whole country wants to make a quilt. We're going to commemorate the year. Can't you make quilting? Can't you do quilts? Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> I lied. I know what? We'll make little projects. We'll do little quilt projects. We'll call it patch craft. And we'll have all these little projects and it'll be really fun. Okay? And that's what I did. And so I found some of them I thought I would share with you. And so this is one of our cute projects. A shopping bag. <laughs> and it still isn't finished. <laughs> The looks on your faces is priceless. And then, oh, we'll do little purses. Look, little purses. Still, Still not finished. <laughs> oh, we're doing good. Oh, look at this one. Actually, this one is nearly finished, but it has a little opening in the side. I know I'll find it and sew it up. But we're quilty, right? Yeah. Oh. We'll do a little quilt, a quilt as you go. Look at this. <laughs> quilt as you go. And it still isn't finished. This sounds like a story here, huh? Okay, oh, oh, I know this one. This is really cool. Okay, this one, a pillow. I would go to the square dance, uh, the warehouse where they did the, the dresses and skirts and stuff, I could buy a big shopping bag for 50 cents. Pillows. It still isn't finished. So there we are. Bill went in law school. We didn't have much money. Two teachers, two teacher incomes gone. We had to figure out where to get our fabrics. Ah. Dumpsters! <laughs> Woo! So we went to OP Factory in Oceanside. Do you know that? The shorts? Uh -huh. And they would always have a dumpster in the back and they would dump all their extra strips and everything in there. So we would hoist Orion. He was little, hoist him into the dumpster. <laughs> and then he'd just get hold of a strip and he'd just pull it out. And we were getting so excited. Pockets and everything. I'd go, aha! Uh -huh. That's how we do it. We strip so get it? Oh, and out of that, we made quilts <laughs> that still aren't finished. Oh, my gosh. This is getting crazy, huh? Oh, but look, I did finish this little one. This one's really cute. Actually, we have a photo to show you of my cute little boys in my home in front of this quilt. There they are. See the quilt? Yep, there it is. They were growing older. It's going along pretty good. So I was teaching my students. We were just having a great time. One of the ladies asked me this morning, how did you get the name Quilt in a Day? So I would line up everybody in a row. I'd have 20 people. We'd sew as fast as we can making the log cabin. And then one of the ladies called me the next day and she said, Al, I just made a twin size quilt and I did it all today. I said, ah, now I have a name. Quilt wow. in a day. Ah, uh, so finally, I started making big quilts. This is the first big quilt that I ever really got together. Ta-da! Wow. Wow. So Thomas's mother gave me this fabric for babysitting, and I put it together. I thought it was pretty good, huh? And it still isn't finished. Actually, I had the batting inside, and we were tying it. And, and then it was so lumpy, I decided to put it in a garage sale. So I pulled the batting out, <laughs> and then I put it in the garage sale. And we have a picture of the very garage sale. Ta-da! There it is. <laughs> and Orion looked at it. 
he pulled it out and he said, Mom, you might be famous someday. We better keep this quilt. <laughs> and so he did. Is that good? So people started encouraging me. They said, oh, Al, you've got to write a book on this. You have to tell people. I tried to tell it over the telephone. It doesn't work. You have to write a book. So my husband, Bill, and I were sitting down one afternoon drinking coffee, and here we are. Orion's in the background laughing. And that is really coffee in my cup. I know it is, but it looks like something else, doesn't it? <laughs> We're just having a good time. Huh? He looks like Grant? He does. Grant looks just like his dad, yeah. Um, but anyhow, we worked for the whole year. It was 1978, 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he took an ink pen, and he drew all of the illustrations, and he typed on a Selectric typewriter, and I was constantly writing until this is the book that we have. Yes? Yes. yes. Uh, my very first book. That's the cover. Heather Ross did the drawing. And if you look inside, I'll let you show them, Sue. We'll let Eric show it. Uh, if you look through the book and you see that hand, that's Bill's hand. He needed a hand to hold the fabric together, so he put out his thumb and he drew it on ink. And that's, that's in the first book. Very valuable. Do not sell it at a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> so we started photocopying these books at 25 at a time, 50 at a time. And when we sold out, we'd run and get more photocopies and just kept it going. And then I started teaching on the road. And there are so many pictures of me teaching on the road. And you have to show the, ooh, so it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> there we are. Do you see the lady holding that book? There she is. She, she's holding the book. And everybody in there is looking at the book. And there are more and more pictures. You can just, yep. OK, see that pink quilt? So. Orion said that one was Grant's quilt. Is that Grant's quilt, Orion? Yes. Okay, so watch. The, that quilt is hanging over and over again. There it is. Uh, okay, there's another pink and brown quilt. Let me see which one is Orion's. So one more. No, it's not in there. there, there oh, it was on the last one. Okay, he likes. He liked the, the one with the zigzag with the white background. And he said that he had both of those quilts and took it to the Quilters Hall of Fame, and he hasn't seen it since. Oh, no. So I don't know what happened. Maybe they have it on display or something, huh? But I want to show you the back of the pink, the pink quilt that was hanging there that he says was Grant's. Look at that oh. backing. <laughs> I do not know who did that quilt. Pretty funny, huh? Well, I taught in many different outfits, and this outfit tops them all. This was a wonderful <laughs> hot day. Do you believe that? It was Maryland, and it was really hot. And you were young. I was young. <laughs> you have one of those? Uh, I might, but I probably shouldn't wear it. <laughs> so anyhow, it was just really fun. Well, anyhow, we just kept on with this book, and then finally we went and redid the book, and right here is the cover of it, and I even have the quilt. Oh, and this is what we did. This is what's so funny. We put thick batting in. We only tied the center, and the borders were put through the batting and the backing so that you could see the stitching on the back. This is how you got it done in a day. And then the binding was brought from the back around to the front. And you're going to love the miter. Oh, it's so good. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, the work that I did. But anyhow, my friend wrote to me. And she noticed that in this particular part, 
I had really kind of, the block was too big, so I just stretched it a little to make it fit in there. And she said, Al, did you do that deliberately just so you could show us that it could be done? <laughs> well, you can actually see it in the, in the book, uh, in the photograph, right? Let me see. Oh, uh, on, the, on the cover, it shows it really stretched right along there. <laughs> Look at that. It's kind of evened out with age. And also, you, you'll notice that I ran out of fabrics and green dot, and I went to a, um, a discount fabric store and bought more green dotted fabric. And you see what happens when you buy fabric at a discount store? <laughs> Do you see it? It's long there. So be careful, huh? And then um, we also, I also had the book redone. Pam Nedlick did the drawings for me, and here is a picture of her hand. It was typeset. It was done by an illustrator, professional illustrator. And we had this book for so many years until most recently. This is the book, finally. It's called the... Um, 20th anniversary, did you say, Orion? Yep. I can't believe. We, we thought this was really hot, the 20th anniversary. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. Do you believe that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And actually, it was uh, the number one seller in Joanne Fabrics across the country. Wow. Is that cool? Yeah. And it's still, it's, what's that? Yes, the dedication page. One page in, one page, flip one page. Yes. You see my quilt? Where? There, right here. No, go clo go close. Oh, you can't go that close. I can't go that close. Oh, Ryan's not mic'd. He, Ryan wants to show you his quilt. Okay, here, you get to show. His quilt, the little boys, the little boys in their bunk beds, and then the grown-up boys. Oh, Aww. <laughs> sound asleep. And there they are. <laughs> and that, that quilt that's there is actually the first quilt I ever finished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it took me quite a while. And thank heavens, we've gotten better. <laughs> Now we're fabulous. You want to see our new quilts? Yes. Yeah. Now you get to compare them. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. So the first one, the very first one that we actually have is behind us. It's Teresa's. And I want you to take your new 40 fabulous years. So I got to tell everybody, this is not your book. These are your photocopied worksheets. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah. I know. It just turned out so nice. Okay, I want you to go to page four. Are you going to stand beside your quilt? Can you, can you hand her a mic? No, she's not. Okay, so this one is six inch blocks. We have two sizes of blocks, and this quilt is six inch blocks. Okay, you want to talk me? about it? Yeah. Okay. Well, everything started by me um, cutting up a jelly roll in uh, one and an eighth strips here. And the jelly roll have four different colors. You can see red, green, yellow, and blue. And then those little uh, log cabin blocks came so cute that uh, as I was cutting the large blocks for Eleanor, I just used her same fabric for my little one. You know, that's what that was basically. And what I did use is all in the light side, all light side. And the other one here was yeah. gradation, you know, from lighter to dark. Mm -hmm. um, I love the wave um, border here. Amy did that. Oh, yeah. Amy, Amy quilted that. that. Isn't the that quilting. nice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we use the, we have a wave and vine ruler that we use to do our scallops or, or waves. 
Okay, you. thank mm -hmm. you. So when you look at page five, page five, you have yardage that you can see on how much to do and such and how many log cabin blocks. It tells you right on the top. 28, 28. Mm -hmm. Six inch log cabin blocks and how many six inch pieced blocks? Six. Right. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. And so now we are going to keep on telling you 28 log cabins and 14 piece blocks as we go along. Good? Yes. So you know you have the yardage for it. We'll show you more about that in just a little while. Okay, Teresa, the next quilt is Sue's, and Sue is right here behind me. And this is her quilt. And so, so I wanted to do a little bit more modern. What do you want me to stand in good, front of you? Yeah. yeah, you're good. Hi. <laughs> you're short. <laughs> so I, I wanted to be a little bit more modern, and I decided to pick two color families that I thought complemented each other. It's sort of teal color and the salmon color. And I did decided just to do eight piece blocks. And you always do twice as many log cabin blocks as you do piece blocks. Well, I should, should say almost all the time. And then um, I just did a little accent magic binding on the outside. I couldn't decide if I wanted the teal color or the salmon color as my binding, so I made it both. So there you go. And show the back, Teresa. It's oh. so cute. Very cute. Yeah, I found this piece of fabric and I thought it was really, really nice. Isn't so. that cute? Yeah. Very, very cute. Yes. Now you'll notice that we put it on the lap page, but you know it's not really a lap. Right. But it is. And those are six inch blocks. Those are six inch blocks. Okay, and Sue can just stand here too because this is now the crib. Yes. The and crib. We're back to 12 inch blocks. So this has four piece blocks and eight log cabin blocks. And this is actually the class that we're going to be teaching in Paducah. So all of you that are out there that are going to Paducah, be sure and sign up. Um, it was really fun to do. You're going to see a larger quilt out of these same fabrics that you can get a kit for. Um, but it was really, really fun. And it, it went fast. Once you get past the log cabins, it goes fast. Okay, <laughs> so your yardage for this one is on page six and seven. Okay, and basically it says that um, you've got eight log cabin blocks and four piece blocks. I think Sue said that. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, is that cute? Yes. Yeah. All right, and it goes fast. Okay, turn the page. This is, this is really the lap quilt. We kind of got mixed up on our photographs. But now this is the lap quilt, okay? And your yardage for this is on page nine. It's on page nine. And how many um, piece blocks? How many log cabin blocks? Sixteen. Sixteen and how many piece? Eight. Okay, sixteen, sixteen. That's good. Sixteen and eight. So Teresa did this one. And you can see that the blocks are solid colors mm -hmm. and very, very bright. All oh, not all solid colors. And when she set it together, she set her blocks among the dark part of her log cabin. See how it goes in the dark part of the sweep? The quilting is fantastic. Mary Jo did this, and she just rushed it down to us. Do you want to know a secret? Yeah. She glued the binding down. <laughs> oh, yeah. She does a really good job. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Remember that. <laughs> it looks really, really good. Okay, so that is the uh, lap robe. And go one more page, and this is the twin. And Patty was going to be here. Patty, oh, Patty. I don't see her. She's invisible. But now she doesn't get to hear you guys all go, ooh. She'll have to watch. It's very, very long. So um, for the setting, we wanted to have a log cabin in each corner. So to make that happen, that's why it's this particular length. But the width is great. It's long enough to tuck underneath the pillows 
and over the top. On this one, she did Scrappy too. I think she did. Um, I think she did a jelly roll too. She loved the jelly roll, so she cut her strips back to one and three fourth inches, and she mixed them up. She doesn't have all the same ones on the light, um, but on the dark, she tried to make the dark the same with the pieces. There's like four rounds of dark on the outside edge. Beautiful um, border framing it. You like it? Yeah. It's pretty. What do you think? Are you seeing the show, baby? Okay, show the back because the quilting is lovely too. And Mary Jo did quilt this one as well. Yeah, I love this little uh, print in the back. It's just beautiful. So sweet. She pulled the pink and the turquoise together to match on the back. All right, the next one I did. Yay! Yay. <laughs> and we're still um, testing the patterns and such. So this one, actually, the, this is um, David and I didn't get ours in till the very end. So I am the very back page. But we are working on kits for this. You may order a kit and have one just exactly like it. But it's we just I I feel like it's summer picnic, yeah. patriotic yeah. summer. Yeah. I was born July, July 3rd. I popped too soon. And so this one also has 26 log cabin and 14 piece blocks, which you'll see in the other months coming up. But um, this time the blocks are in the dark as well. And the isn't the 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 light has four different colors. It's like it's light is called B, so it's B1, B2, and then the next round is B3, B4, next round B5, B6. Get it? It works. And the last one would be B7 and B8. And then you repeat on the dark side, it's just B, it's just a uh, D for dark, D1, D2, and keep on going, D3 and D4, D5, D6, D7. Easy? Easy peasy. Yeah, so you can go in close and look at all of those blocks. Those are really, really cute. Um, and that we call full. You can add whatever size border you want to fit your own bed, and that's good. Okay, so this one is um, Sue's. This one is on page, let me see, page 12 and 13. And how about, we'll just switch places. You want to you, switch? Okay. Yes. Isn't that let good? Let me step over We've that We've done cord. that before. <laughs> so anyway, I made mine out of Kansas Troubles by Moda. And I decided to make it really scrappy. So I have 10 different lights and I place for the, my log cabins and I placed them in all different positions. And if you did get this kit, it's gonna tell you what you need to cut to get to this effect, okay? And then for my mediums and my darks, I actually have 28 different fabrics wow. in there. And that's what you get in the kit as well. Is you, that's better in a kit, isn't it? Yeah. Good somebody got that for you. Yeah. <laughs> I pretty much tell you what block comes out of each piece of fabric and how to cut it. So just to make it easier for you. But I like that kind of, that real scrappy look. And again, we didn't put any borders in it because we thought we'd let you pick out your own. So how many log cabin blocks? Uh, 28. 28. And how many piece blocks? 14. 14. You're getting it, you're getting it. <laughs> and I didn't have fabric to do the borders. So mine was very scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So that's all that we have here on the floor. And now I'm going to look at Eric. I've got this from this morning. So now you're supposed to go on my face, Eric, and you're supposed <laughs> to swing around. Ah! So now when you're looking, you get to see the whole studio. There's people sitting in here. Eric is on the camera here. And Orion is turning the camera into the quilts that are on the back wall. Go open up a little bit further, Eric, and you'll see Orion. Oh, he's all the way open. Okay, Orion's out there. All right, and so on the right, let's see which quilt you have. On the right? Ah, the 30s quilt, the 30s quilt. 
And Teresa loves that bright red and used it in her logs. And then all nice pastel uh, pieces for her blocks. Oh, she came. We'll have to do that all over again. Patty walked in the audience. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Yay. Oops. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> okay. So anyhow, it's just such a great... Um, quaint looking quilt that we finished the outside edges with the, the scalloped outside border and notice the lovely quilting along the binding it is beautiful just beautiful um mary Jo did that one as well yes mary Jo, isn't it pretty beautiful. and you'll notice teresa has some other blocks in that the other ones don't so we're trying to put everybody's blocks in together and you can choose. You'll have a couple of extra ones so you can go ahead and choose between them. Okay, that's good. Is it good? Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. And now, David, you have to come up and use the mic. Okay, this is David's and it looks like it's solid fabrics, but it's actually grunge fabrics that he picked and... So I picked grunge fabrics. I was really inspired by the colors of Latin culture. So you've got a lot of different colors working together that you normally wouldn't put together, but they kind of fit together to like a little party in a quilt. <laughs> a party <laughs> a quilt. Party. I like that. So um, I also was playing with my blocks and I decided to invert my log cabin to kind of make my piece blocks float. And so that was a little different than the other. Thank you. And also mine, keep on going over, Orion. I made this one, it is king size. I have two king size beds and I, oh, horse, but I made them to fit and they are beautiful on a king size bed. So the line is Homestead, Homestead Fabrics by Bannertex. It's just new and um, we're so excited. Some of the pieces already sold out and we're getting them reprinted. So you can see all the 14 piece blocks also are in the light side of the log cabin block. And then we just did a really narrow turquoise to pull that turquoise out white and then that purple that's already sold out. Everybody loved it so much and we're um, getting, we've ordered that. So all of the kits are really getting ready, but we already sold out. We're getting more in so you can order them. Doesn't that sound fun? Yes. That's good. Okay, so now my sister Patty, are you ready? Poor thing, you just walked in oh. the door. Okay. Would you like to show your quilt? Oh, oh where is it? Okay, stand up oh. and you get to show your quilt. Nothing like putting you on the spot. I know. I was gonna come here and be entertained. <laughs> oh, you've been oh you missed the whole entertainment. I'm sorry. So, David will help okay. you. So, you've dressed to match your quilt. Look at this. Oh, okay. So, do you want to tell anything about your quilt? Well, you get that microphone. Yeah, I've got her. Oh, I started out making a, a great big quilt and I had all these log cabin blocks. And then Eleanor said, Oh, you can just make a twin size. So, I was really happy because <laughs> I didn't have to make all of these blocks. <laughs> so, so I said, oh, a twin sounds perfect. So um, I was inspired by, uh, there was actually a jelly roll one of my students was using in one of my classes, and it, her quilt turned out so pretty, and these are kind of my favorite colors, and they, they said it kind of looks like a little garden, like there's a little path walking through the green the lush green so it's kind of that's great yeah, yeah just some of my favorite colors the secret garden secret yeah. garden and i have to tell you i had the most fun with this quilt that's i love good. it i just made the little miniature one and i decided that was the most fun quilt i ever made so yeah i learned yeah you learn a lot you learn a lot blocks. there's learn a lot, lot of different techniques yeah. okay thank you now you can sit down but i showed all the old photos already oops i don't need that <laughs> did you see me talking in the mic <laughs> oh my gosh so do you want to see how to make it now 
Yay, let's do it. Okay, Teresa is going to help me do some cutting. So in your book, I would like you to turn to page, let me see, 18. Page 18. And you can see the pictures for the center square in that red dot. And look underneath, it tells you how wide to cut your strips for your 12 inch blocks. Oops. Two and a half inches. How wide is it? Two and a half. Yes! <laughs> you saw that. That's good. Okay, and so Teresa is just going to take the 6 by 24 ruler and rotary cutter. And this is a little polka dot from Riley Blake. Very, very cute. You're just going to cut it from salvage to salvage. She is left-handed, so everything that um, she does, you guys have to just do the reverse, right? <laughs> yeah, usually it's um, usually the opposite. So the first thing you want to do is just square off the edge. Take the quarter inch line on the ruler, line it up along the edge and just cut it. Just trim it off, make sure it's straight. And then you're going to take your ruler and get rid of that. Wow, my blade is so sharp. I just changed it. Whoa, cool. I, I changed yours too. Oh, you did? I know there's this really cool, there's a new blade. It's called what? Endurance. 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 It, it, is, like it is. It's really nice. And the 60 millimeter is coming out next. Oh, and the 60 millimeter. Whoa. Very nice. Okay, so this is the two and a half inch strip for the 12 inch block. Now look underneath. How wide is the center for the six inch block? So, okay, we're gonna sh we're gonna show you that later for the six inch. But just remember that, okay? So we got strips all ready. So usually you just need to have two, two and a half inch strips. That's pretty good, huh? Okay, now the second piece that we need to cut is um, pieces for the darks and the backgrounds. And they are all one measurement. Look at the picture down below for the logs. And the logs for the 12 inch blocks are supposed to be? One and three quarter inches. Yay, one and three quarter. So once again, you can just go ahead and take your quarter inch line and straighten it so you're just ready to go. Hold down your ruler. See, she's moving her fingers. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Doo -doo. <laughs> okay, one and three fourths. And you cut from salvage to salvage. And you just... Do you, did you see in the yardage chart? Each yardage chart tells you how many strips you need to cut for B1. Okay, let me tell you. I'll show you here as we go around. It's B1, B2. Did I tell you that? Not yet. B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8. Tells you how many. And the same thing for the dark. Okay, so look on page 19, and you will see a very cool new ruler. Do you have the ruler? Let me see. You have the ruler? Yeah. Is that fun? That's for the members. Woohoo! The club members. You're gonna, you're gonna really like this. So I want to show you how to um, cut with the ruler, but let, let me show you this side by side. So if you don't have the log cabin ruler, you can take your 4 by 14 inch quilt in a day ruler, and there are, it tells you where to put some glow line tape. I want to show the back page. Okay, can you see the glow line tape? First, it's underneath two and a half, and then it keeps on. This is the length of each one of your strips that you're going to be cutting. So you can do that. But you guys all have your own ruler, right? Yes. Right. Right, yay. Okay, so now we're going to turn to page 20. Page 20, and this shows cutting the two and a half inch squares 
and the one and three fourths inch strips. Okay, so I'm going to take my fabric, fold it in half, and I'm going to trim off the salvage edge. You always put the fold on your right and your salvage on the left. And you take your ruler and you look it over. Let us see. Up at the top, I'm going to put this on my page. Up at the top, you see center, 12 inch block, okay? And then it says center, 6 inch block, okay? And everything is on there. There is a finished log cabin block. There's Quilt in a Day's 800 number. That's good to know. <laughs> and then this is the block that has the penciled in B1, B2. And then when you get to the bottom, you see, okay, one half or one part of it is all for 12-inch blocks, and the other part is for 6-inch, all on one ruler. Is that good? Yeah. Is that cool? Clever, huh? It's even going to be easy to use. That's what's the best part. Okay, so I'm going back to page 20. I've got my strips. And as I said, you usually only need to have two log cabin or center strips. Okay, so just take and put your ruler and trim off that salvage edge. Get rid of it. Okay, now. I'm doing a 12 inch block. I'm lining up my lines. Ooh, look. Is that good? Right there. And you just cut your two and a half inch square, slide it out of the way. You don't need to reorganize or anything. Just keep on sliding your ruler up your strips, cutting your center squares. Are we good? Yes. Is that amazing? Okay, I, I get, I, once I get going, I can't stop. <laughs> okay, and you're just going to stack them. And probably the easiest way might be to stack them all right side up so that whenever you're ready for sewing, you can just go. Okay, this is the two and a half inch strip. And I'm just going to set this aside. And this is for the logs. And just take them. Actually, there's two of them. So let's get the fold on the right and just reverse it if you're left handed and line it up. Okay, good. And then you have to turn the ruler around and work the other way. And now it says B1. Trim it. Get rid of it. Slide B1 in like this and just go ahead and stack these pieces and just keep on going. And I told you how many logs most of the big ones have. How many logs? 28. So guess how many of these strips you have to cut? 28. 28. 28. And you know what? I said, oh my gosh, I can't stand to count. Just take the number of strips it says in the book, and when the strips are all cut up, you're done cutting. <laughs> right? That's it. You don't have to count. Forget counting. Okay, that's, that's me. I, I can't stand to do little stuff like that. Okay, so that was B1, and this is what Teresa showed me. You stack them up all neat, and they're just like cards and you just pass them, and then they're perfect. See? <laughs> Aren't you glad you showed me that? Okay, so now we've got 28 for B1. Now we're just going to slide it up to B2. It's the same, and you just keep on going, cutting. So I have four in each stack. That's pretty good, huh? You could, you could um, count really quick like that, too. Okay, and so you just keep on going, and you follow the ruler, and you cut all your B1s up to B8, and then you do all your darks. That was so cool. Is that cool? Yeah. Aren't you glad you have it?
it's worth the price of admission, right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's see how Teresa's got it all neat and tidy for me. Ta da! Ooh! Ah! Is that beautiful? And it's all organized and all ready to go. That's what I like. Okay, so now keep on going. Let us go to the paste-up sheet. So it's really smart if you go ahead and paste in little pieces of fabric so you know what your block's going to look like. And you can keep on referring back to it just to make sure that it's good. Okay, so you actually uh, did these strips. I, um, I wanted to show you some people do strips on the first two, on the center and B1. And so Teresa actually um, pieced those together for me and you press the seam towards B1. And this is just like the picture that you have there. Oh, actually not, because those aren't pressed open. But that's okay. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you want to square off the left end and just cut two and a half inch strips. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, okay. That's okay. Ta-da! Get rid of it. And that way, if you just do two and a half, you already got a good start, right? Is that good? Yes. Or you can turn the page and you can individually stack all of your blocks. There. Okay, I'm going to give this back to you. I'm keeping my table neat and tidy. I don't know why, but I'm trying to keep it neat and tidy. Okay, so now I'm just going to do what it says. It tells you how many center squares you have to do. How many center squares in the crib? Eight. Okay. And lap. Sixteen. So that's just follow right along there. Okay, right now, your center is right side up. Your um, B1 is beside you. So the first thing you want to do is put on a quarter inch foot. A quarter inch foot. And then you want to take your cute little cleaning tool. Micro brushes. I, micro brushes. Micro brushes, thank you. <laughs> Micro brushes. Have you seen these? Yeah. Micro brushes? Okay. So Sally Murray told us you're supposed to clean your bobbin, clean your bobbin case every time you put in a new bobbin. You know that? I thought you're supposed to clean your machine after your needle breaks each time. <laughs> but I didn't listen to either one. Is that what you thought too? But look. Don't tell Baby Lock, I cleaned my machine. That's all that I got. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Do you believe how brave I am to show you that? Oh my goodness. I was wondering why I was having trouble. <laughs> so anyhow, just take your new br micro brushes and clean out your machine and and look, they're so cute in pastel colors, aren't they cute? But you just run this around and you can just, I completely take everything apart. Okay, I'm gonna have you put all my pretty little colors back in the bag. Whoop, thank you. They really work great. See the tip on them? And they bend. You can kind of bend around corners and stuff. Okay, quarter inch foot, 15 stitches to the inch. Take your uh, B1 that is right side up and flip it right sides together to your center. Get it all lined up and just stitch right along there. Now this time we did cut everything to size and it's just um, so that you don't have to be cutting apart each time. I think it goes really quick once you get everything cut and you just sit down and sew that goes very, very fast. And so I'll use my stiletto to just lift things up. And that's good. And 
just keep on sliding it one after the other and just do your whole total number or divide it into more manageable blocks like maybe you only want to do eight at a time and do it to clear through then you won't get bored and then um, it goes quick too okay so I'm just gonna demo on three um, cut it apart okay I have this cool tool where is my cool tool <gasps> beside me <laughs> it's called my cutting gizmo now usually I'm pressing so I put it right on my ironing board and I never remove it but we're not going to press in between our blocks right now so I have to keep it handy so there's a blade in here so you just whoop 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 and you stack them all up and you make that noise while you do it <laughs> is that good all right so now pressing you're gonna just lift the strip on the top and press so the seam is behind this strip now you could use your wooden iron just go whoop, 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 up like that or we have this really cool looks like for um, putting up wallpaper for um, little roller but see it's got this thing right for seams roll and press roll and press roll and press but this won't distort your pieces it won't stretch them so it works really good so just lift it up roll and press whichever one you want to do okay you have to have fun while you're doing this remember Patty said it was fun okay so now we just finished what says on page 24 24 that was B1 and now when we go to the next page at the top of the page it says we're going to add what strips B2. B2 do you like those numbers Okay, now, when I do this, what I found out was that I like my blocks wrong side up, and that is a picture in your book. It's wrong side up, so that I have my strips on the right, my block on the left, wrong side up. I'm on page 25. So all you do is just pick up your block, put it right sides together to your strip. And you just get into this good old assembly line. So I'm just going to get this set up, match it up on the top. Use your stiletto, line that up. The seam goes away from the center. Okay? So you just keep on doing as many as you want. And assembly line. So you get the first one right, you get them all right. You get the first one wrong, you get them all wrong, all wrong. One lady told me, she said, Eleanor, my quilt in a day is longer than your quilt in a day. But you really can honestly get them done. As I said when I was teaching, oh my gosh, I could do, um, I would stand at my sewing machine and I could literally sew nine blocks for a log cabin and get them sewn together and then just start finishing. So it was a lot of fun. Okay. 24 hours. Yep, that's right. The day is 24 hours. Okay, so now. Boop. Boop. Well, the kids said they thought that I made a new quilt every day. That when they got up in the morning they were I was in my sewing room making a quilt okay so now pick up the strip open it push the seam is behind it right here and this part is really important for you to look at on page 25 it shows you what the block looks like it just looks like this and it says measure and check your quarter inch seam allowance because right now if your block is not the same measurement chances are good that your block is going to be too large or too small so I need to have the six um, the six inch square up ruler oh thank you isn't that handy okay so just take the block and line up the outside edges and look at ooh perfect and what's it supposed to be this is 12 inch 
Three and three fourths. Three and three fourths. And if it is, if yours is three and three fourths, you're good to go. Yay. Okay, and what about the uh, six inch? Two and an eighth. Okay, that's good. So now turn the page. Beep. Is this easy? I told Merritt you guys like the book. <laughs> oh, the patterns, the photocopy patterns. Okay, so you can see it actually has a color. I highly recommend just get this kit, these colors, just follow the book, right? <laughs> it's kind of like a little uh, coloring book. Okay, so it's the same thing that I'm just going to assembly line sew so this piece on here. Um, and while I do that, you have the picture of the world's largest quilt. Do you still have the world's largest quilt? I do. Okay, and show that to Eric. So we were, we were trying to get a quilt in the Guinness Book of World Records. Our idea was wow. that we taught, we went around the country and we taught people how to um, make the blocks and then we put them all together into what was going to get in the Guinness Book of World Records. And you see Orion down there on the floor? I think you, are you on a little scooter or something, Orion? No, but we did use a scooter to sew the, the binding. He said we did use a scooter to sew the binding. Right, right. We actually put a sewing machine on a little scooter and pushed it around the outside edge. <laughs> That was really fun. It's big. We actually had the backing down, the batting on top, and the quilt top. And we got a call and said, hold the quilt. There's another one bigger than yours. Oh, It was in Europe. And they took all of the whole town, brought their little quilts, and they sewed them together. They took a picture and they called it the world's largest quilt. Then they unsewed the quilt and sent the blocks home. Wow. Is that right? Gee. Darn it. I was thinking maybe we should try that all over again, huh? Yeah. Don't you think we should? Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, to celebrate my 40th. Are you guys going to help me make blocks? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Signature quilt, which is about. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do you remember um, still stripping? We had people send us signatures. And I wrapped that around my porch in Julian. That was really big. That was really good. Okay. So look at this. Okay. And so I am on page 26. Turn it over. Take the next. D2, we're going to sew it right on here, okay? And so, Teresa, why sew this on? I want you to put all of these aside and get your little quilt out, all right? Can you do that? Oh, oh yeah, put it under the camera for Eric. Thank you. You're real quick, Johnny, on the spot. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that is a really pretty one. Um, one time, one year in Paducah, we wrapped the world's largest quilt around a truck. That would be a really good photo to get Orion. We wrapped it around the truck. That was good. And we had it on the front of this building. We hung it over the roof. OK, there is something unique on this uh, strip that I am adding. You have two seams. Your first seam goes up away from the center square and the second seam goes down away from the center square. So this is going to be pretty typical of your seams. You're always going to have two. The top one goes up, the second one goes down. And so what do you think? I'm getting more and more done, huh? And so take the block and turn it over and show the, the back side, Teresa on this one. I think she, this one right here. Turn, yeah, show the back side how it's all lays flat. 
from the center out. Is that amazing? Yeah. It just lays awesome. perfect. Awesome. And now you can press it. Yoo-hoo. And, you know, at one time we put in squaring up, but I don't know that any of us have been needing to square up. They seem to be pretty good. But and if it needs to be squared up. But if it needs to be, you could. You should be 12 and a half. 12 and a half. All right. Well, you said at one time it was better to square before you put the last one on. Do you still feel that way? Unlike having? Okay. Yeah, we, we need to be passing the um, mic around so people yeah. hear. Okay, Lou Ann said, I said at one time it's better to square before you put the last one on and I I didn't add that to the book so you let me know if that's necessary okay mm -hmm. she said should you really check it before you added this outside edge mm -hmm. just check it and see if it's square just really be careful what your quarter inch seam allowance and I bet any money you'll have perfect blocks mm -hmm. you let me know Luann okay, okay. That would be really good. Okay, Teresa, I'm going to move my book aside. Mm -hmm. And now you are going to take this. This is in your book, a picture of this, of the little pieces. We are going to talk to you about the um, first quilt, the wall hanging on page four and five, this wall hanging that's behind me. And it comes from this beautiful jelly roll. Eat your heart out. We only have a few left. I'll get to watch and see who jumps out of their seats <laughs> to get it. It's all these beautiful colors that you make all of the little blocks in the, in the blue and the yellow, the green, and the red. Luscious. And this is one Patty liked it so much that she made one too when she said this was her favorite one. Okay, Teresa, you want to take a two and a half inch strip. Uh -huh. This is the center. Okay, <laughs> take the two and a half inch. Okay. Okay, so I'll stand close to you. I uh -huh. think we need the mic on, huh? But if you don't have it on, okay. just talk here, but we need to have it. Okay, so. First, she is going to cut off the pinked edges. Okay, line it all up and just, um, the strip is two and a half, and we want to make two, one, one and eight. an eighth. Okay, so she's cutting, trimming that way a little bit off there. Ta-da! It's hardly worth playing with. Get rid of it. And now move it to one and an eighth. Okay. And then she said, don't pick that one up. Just slide your ruler because now you can trim again at two, two and a fourth. And, that's, and that makes perfect two and one eighth inch strips. One and one eighth. One and one eighth. What did I say? Two, one, and one. One and one eighth. One and one eighth. Okay. One and one eighth. Okay, okay, and that's good. Yeah. And while we're doing this, these little guys are from a little charm pack. And what size are these little guys? Then we just pick up the solid color if they want to get good. And they cut, can I? Can I uh huh, you can cut it. Uh, it's mine, but I'll let you cut it. It's some, you know, as soon as we see a really pretty quilt, we all want to get it. <laughs> so then as soon as you do it, you just cut the square at one and a half. One and a half. Okay. Then three. Okay, you're cutting the whole okay. five inch square uh -huh. up. That's what I did with those. Uh huh. And then after that, what is four and a half, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. and four and a half, and that's what you have left. Then you turn it over the same, and then do one and a half, three, 
these are all the centers that she's making. You make eight at a time, eight colors, eight of one color at a time. And, so you, you and then you go into the next you color. Get four from nine and you have one extra. Perfect, and you have one extra. Cool. Okay, so give me your one and a half inch strip. And you got lost. Whoops. Okay, centers. Right here, this is what centers. Centers. It's all in the book. <laughs> okay, so give me the white strip and the ruler back. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so fold on the right, salvage on the left. You take the end that says the logs. And this time, we're going to use the little one that says the six inch blocks, okay? If you look at your ruler, it's really skinny. And you, so Patty, you had a good time doing this, huh? I had a great time. That's really fun. So trim it off, and it tells you right there that this is B1, and you just, follow it along and just do exactly what we did. See, they're the same size. This is the center, B1, and you're just going to assembly line sew exactly the same, but they're just little. All right? Good? Oh my goodness. I think we told them everything. Did we say everything, Teresa? Oh, now you guys know how to make your log cabin. Whoa. So it's just really fun. So you just remembered the log cabin story. So the center was traditionally red, the hearth, the heart, the valentine. Happy Valentine's Day. And then this is the front. This is the light, the sun coming into the front of the cabin. The sun or the light is all the good things in life, huh? Hot chocolate, chocolate, <laughs> chocolate, coffee. And then it goes through. This is the shadow behind the cabin. This is the dark side of life. And you have to remember, you have to have a little bit of the dark side to know how good that light side is, huh? So you have a great time making your log cabin. The next time we're together, I'm going to show you how to make two pieced blocks. And we'll do pieced blocks until we get them all done. And then I'll show you how to set that whole quilt together. Thank you.